Where does the mind go once it's lost? These eyes, this face, I don't know them. None of this is real, is it? Out there, I'm nobody, but in here, I feel complete. Hey guys! One of my favorite things about the early 2000s is the electronic dance music scene. Back in high school, I was huge into trance, techno, drum and bass, and to an extent I still am today. I was into any sort of music or rhythm game that was out there, I tried them all. Dance Dance Revolution, Poppin' Music, Beat Mania, and of course, Para Para Paradise. Yeah, that's right boys, I played it. But back in 2002, Sega would release a game that was like none other. Res. Have you ever wanted to play the video game embodiment of that enlightened meme? Yeah, well, if you play Res, that's basically what it is. The game takes place in a futuristic computer network called the K-Project, where large amounts of data are being controlled by an AI called Eden. When a massive surge of data is fed through the network, Eden isn't able to handle all the information, and thus is infected with a virus causing her to question her existence, which forces her to go into an automatic shutdown sequence, and if this happens, a cataclysmic amount of damage will be caused to the entire network. And your role in all this cyberspace chaos is the hacker! who must traverse through all the network subsystems, destroying each corruption while searching for Eden so she can be awakened. Fuck yeah, bro, I can finally live out my 90s hacker fantasy wet dream. This game is a rail shooter. It plays almost identical to the Panzer Dragoon games, and there's a good reason for that. A good handful of former members of Team Andromeda, the people that made the Panzer Dragoon games, worked on Res. Res is different, though. Destroying enemies will create music to which the controller will vibrate to the beat of the main song of the level. There are four incredibly gorgeous mind-bending levels with an even more insane fifth level that can be unlocked once you've met specific requirements in the first four. Within every one of the first four levels, there's 10 subsystems that you'll have to trek through by destroying a password protector before reaching the end boss. Res is supposed to simulate a visual representation of projective synesthesia. Projective synesthesia is the perceptual phenomenon in which a stimulation of one sensory or cognitive pathway leads to an involuntary experience in a secondary sensory or cognitive pathway. Simply put, people who can see colors, forms, and shapes when stimulated by touch, sound, or other senses. And with that being said, I give you the Res Trance Vibrator. <laughs> yes, it is a USB attachment for your PlayStation 2 that connects up with your Res game. And it does exactly what you're thinking it does. This was only distributed in Japan, and for good reason, I can't imagine any salesperson at any video game store in North America trying to push to sell this to a mom who's buying Res for her teen daughter who really likes music games. Traditionally, I believe the proper way to use this is to put it in your pocket or under your feet. But I'm sure in some cases people have been known to put this on their head! <laughs> oh yeah, now we're ready, boys. Oh, I feel it. I am one with the network. Oh. <laughs> this is so cool. <laughs> Go. Oh! Oh! Imagine that on your crotch. For the sake of this review, I'm gonna continue without using the trance vibrator, but that's a little taste of how much it vibrates and you know what it exactly does. Seriously, what kind of sex pervert would make a device for your PlayStation 2 game like this? <sighs> Only in Japan. Only in Japan. 
Levels contain three different types of power-ups, the first two being progress nodes, one is a single and the other is a triple. You need eight progress nodes in order to evolve your avatar to the next form. They work like a health bar, so the more forms that you've evolved into, the more health you ultimately have. But if you get hit once, you get devolved back down to the previous form, and so on until you're dead. There are five different forms that you can evolve into, from something as simple as a sphere to something more complex like a space fetus thing. And depending on which form you're in will dictate the noise that your attack makes when you destroy enemies. The last item is called an overdrive node. This works like a smart bomb, where if you trigger it, it targets every enemy automatically that's on the screen and destroys them for a certain amount of time. The boss stages at the end of each level consist of defeating phases of the boss that's shifting forms while you're breaking down its defenses to reach the core to do damage. Now, once you've analyzed every subsystem 100% in every level, you'll unlock a fifth and final stage, which is very complex. And from what I gathered, it's traveling through what seems to be the creation of human life, all the way until you reach Eden. The cool thing about stage 5 is the difficulty of this level is scaled to how well you did in the first four levels. In other words, if you want the fifth stage to be a little bit easier, then just do shitty on the first four stages. And of course, the better you did in those stages, the harder it's going to be. Once you reach Eden, you'll have to piece her back together by eradicating the infected information. There are two endings, a good and a bad. Both are simple and elegant, which is how a game like Rez should end. Though a somewhat short game, Rez has a lot of replayability, mainly because of all the unlockables. You can unlock different gameplay modes, character skins, hell, you can even be an alien from Space Channel 5. Rez has been put on many different consoles over the years, a spiritual successor, Child of Eden, a sequel and or remake, I'm not exactly sure because I haven't played it on the PS4 called Rez Infinite, and an HD port or two to other consoles. Overall, Rez is a game that I played a ton of back in 2002. Between the amazing music, the inspired graphics, and the atmosphere that just oozes out of every orifice of this game, it still holds up after 20 years. If you can find yourself a copy of Rez on the PlayStation 2, Dreamcast, uh, PlayStation 4, a ton of consoles, I highly recommend giving this game at least one playthrough. It's something that, I don't know, is just completely different from most games that are out there, especially when it came out on the PS2. Of course, this is the Japanese version with my Japanese PS2 and my Japanese vibrator. And that's gonna do it for this video. Let me know what you guys think of Rez and the Trance Vibrator down below in the comment section. Also, share this video with someone who you know likes electronic music, rhythm games, or just PS2 games that are kind of hidden gems, I guess you could say. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that like button, smash that subscribe button, and notification bell, which lets you know when I make new content every week. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Love ya, and I'll see you next time in the Nerd Lair. Stay resy. <laughs>